Water. Now, to discuss this, we're joined by Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. Ryan, uh, what do you make of Apple earnings? I mean, they came in hot, Michelle. Uh, they were big numbers that came in. I think they blew away everyone's expectations this quarter. So I'm impressed. They certainly did. Uh, and the stock was uh, soaring. And after I was trading up about 55%. Uh, but if you look at the stock year yeah. to date, and I'd like to pull up a chart, I mean, there has been tremendous growth and, and appreciation for, for Apple. It's up about, uh, I would say, uh, over 30% yeah. so far this year. Up at 5% in after hours trading, expected to hit a new record uh, high tomorrow uh, at the opening bell. Is it too late to get in on the Apple action? Uh, no, it's a good question. I mean, if you look at the valuation, it's actually relatively cheap. Uh, it only trades at 15 times future earnings versus the S&P right now trades at closer to 20 times future earnings. So on a relative basis, it's actually not one of the more expensive stocks in the S&P 500. And based on that growth forecast, especially talking about Apple services, and that's like when you go up to iTunes, right. uh, the Apple Store, and you buy things. That grew by 22 percent, uh, which was completely unexpected. So I think as those services grow, um, we can expect revenue over time to keep growing as well. So they're all very good signs as a long-term investor. One sign that wasn't so good is what's happening in China, because sales in China were yes. down about 10 percent, I believe. Yeah, they're the fourth largest carrier in China, and that's, that's, that's going to be one of the biggest economies in the world. It's going to be the biggest economy in the world, you know, come the next decade. So I think that is a problem, and I think they're going to have to figure out a way to penetrate that market because it is so big and so vast so for growth. Is, is it problematic that Apple just doesn't have that, that sort of cachet that it has in China, or people aren't yeah. willing to spend as much for iPhones in China? Well, there's also this WeChat chat app that Apple does not have that most right. of the carriers are on. So it's kind of like the way you would talk on your iPhone. I actually use a Droid, so I can't really talk that, that well about it. But basically, it's their version of the iChat. Um, so that's something they're going to have to work on. But I think when you think about future growth, I really think you have to think about Apple services because that's where they're really going to be able to grow out their earnings in the next couple of years, you know, more so than the you know, anticipated iPhone 8 coming out in the fall. And, you know, uh, Ryan, everybody was looking at uh, Apple, Netflix, mm -hmm. Facebook, uh, Google to, to see if this tech rally still has steam, if the FANG rally can continue yes. into the second half of the year. Yeah. What do you think now? Um, I mean, it's very strong, and I talked about this earlier in the week. Um, I think you have to be a little bit concerned about a bubble being formed um, because you have a lot of money going to what we call exchange-traded funds, which are passive indexes, and they're capitalization-weighted. So whatever stocks are doing the best, in this case, the FANG trade, that's where all the new money gets weighted to. Right. Then you have professional managers that are trying to keep up with the indexes, so they need to overweight those stocks to keep up. So I think you have to be really careful, especially when it comes to diversification, is, yes, these stocks are hot right now, but everything's cyclical. You know, trees only grow, they can't grow to the sky. Um, so you so, would go with a tech sector ETF over individual stocks then? What I would say is I would just make sure you're waiting on your overall portfolio is not getting too heavily weighted to those tech stocks specifically. And just by owning passive indexes, you might be overweighted in that sector. But if, if we look at how earnings have come in so far, 72 percent uh, of the S&P 500 companies that have reported so far, and about sure. two thirds of them have reported, have beat estimates. Yeah. But what, what does that signal? This is how unusual is that in, in an earnings yeah. quarter? Well, I think it's just a reminder, we're in a big bull market. This could be the longest global expansion of all time. And guidance is going up. So corporations are saying, hey, surprise, we're making more money. But guess what? We think we're going to make even more money. So as an investor- And are they right? Yeah, I mean, they've been right so far. And I would say that uh, they probably are right. Uh, it's not typical that you'll see uh, companies giving their guidance upwards. It's been a couple of years since we've seen that. So if they're confident, they're not going to be confident unless they're really, really confident. They're not going to go out and, and say that on an earnings call like Tim Cook did, said today about Apple's earnings. So that's a very good sign. All right. Uh, let's hope it is. Ryan Payne, thank you so much. Appreciate it.